sentences and sit down. Uh, I won't, but uh, <clears throat> here's the two sentences. Main concepts. We are what we teach. Whatever you see in the way that we work, however we operate as a society, we are what we teach. And believe it or not, inside all of us is the child who always wants to do what the teacher wants, what the teacher tells us. Well, if those two things are true, then we've got big problems. Because we aren't what we want to be, yet we are what we teach. Let me start before I comment a little bit about that to uh, focus on two apologies. First, I come to you today dressed in fabrics, modern fabrics, clothing. I'm not in animal skins. I have uh, um, a PDA device attached to my body most of the time. Yet I come to you from a Neolithic culture of teachers and scientists, educators. I'm supposed to be laughing now. <laughs> and here's what this Neolithic culture that I come from apologetically, leads us to do, and I've put this into a few things that I've written. Here's what we do now. We dig holes in the earth to drain it of prehistoric liquids and solids. We burn these solids in hundreds of millions of little fires, they're called internal combustion engines or power plants or whatever, to produce heat as energy, losing most of that heat as energy through inefficient distribution. We think that unintended consequences are stock devaluations that result from massive oil spills. That's an unintended consequence. Now, why do I pick those three things and why do I offer that as one apology? We still don't get it. We, we, we're, we're, it's, it's as if we have decided that we want our own evolution to be sort of slowed down. We still don't get that that's basically how we operate. We still just dig stuff out of the ground, burn it up, and see what happens. And so I apologize that I come from the group of educators and scientists that have given you the latest, greatest nothing. So the second apology. As teachers, educators, and scientists, we've been slow to innovate slow to develop teaching and learning systems capable of addressing issues of the future. Most of our energy is devoted in teaching and educating to transferring what we think everyone needs to know from the past. And I'm overstating this, obviously, but you get my point. So that somehow we can know what was known so that we therefore know what to do. Well. 6.7 billion people later, carbon dioxide parts per million in the atmosphere is something substantially greater than a scene that appears to be normal. Yet we're still sort of plowing the same field. And so I apologize that we've not been adapted enough. Here's why. A concept like sustainability is difficult. It's challenging. As a teaching and learning topic, here's why it's really hard to do. And this is what the Department of Education and universities and schools and corporations and everyone has to figure out. It is, what is sustainability? Let's talk about the term for just a second. It is an outcome-driven, integrated natural and social system, science and design topic. You have to study how two systems work together. Us as a species, and nature as a natural environment. You have to study both of them individually, in a reductionistic way, and in a system way, at the same time. You then have to be able to plug that into what do you want to do, the design part. Well, unfortunately, we don't have very many education and teaching and discovery organizations that are capable of operating on that level yet. Because we come from, in this Neolithic concept, an overly rigid, non-adaptive, rule-driven 
backward-looking education enterprise. Yeah. What that means then is that we are driven to teach from largely rigid, backward-looking, compartmentalized models. And let me tell you why we do this, and let me tell you, let me go back to the original phrase. We are what we teach. We teach chemistry. DuPont has fantastically benefited from chemistry, as we all have from chemistry. Chemistry is taught still in isolation. Still in isolation. I want to talk a little bit about that. Here's what this compartmentalization model does. We teach science as a hard, separate subject. We struggle to find scientists capable of teaching science. Why do we teach it as a hard, separate subject? Why isn't it the part of the foundation of all subjects? Why is it not reconceptualized and taught in different ways? We produce teachers that are undertrained, poorly supported, and intellectually too narrow. It's not their fault. They went to a system and went through an educational enterprise that narrowed them, then made them into generalists, and then asked them to do things in narrow spaces again. It's a very, very challenging assignment. So what's the result? And you're listening to an optimist, by the way. <laughs> a realist, but an optimist. A real mess. A real mess. Here we have this thing called sustainability, which if we don't get the design interface between the built environment and the natural environment right, the natural environment will carry on, but without us. The fate of the earth is not an, in question. The fate of us is in question. The earth will carry on with or without us. <clears throat> we can't, we don't have the kind of adaptability that some people might imagine that we have. So we have a real mess. Here we have this fate-altering area of human focus called sustainability that presently gets taught as behavior. You need to recycle more. Let's make things more green. Let's focus on green purchasing. It's not taught as a core value. It's not taught as a core function. It's not taught as core knowledge. It's taught as peripheral knowledge. It's an add-on to the existing structure. So what's needed? Well, obviously from my tone and from the things that I'm saying, what's needed is not casual rethinking of curriculum additions. What's needed are not new ways to teach fourth graders to concentrate on putting the paper into the blue trash can. What's needed is radical reform. This isn't just about curriculum. It's about all kinds of things. And so let me outline some of the radical reforms at my university that we are in the midst of implementing. 